Thanks, Chris from the Hagen Factory. So this week we're back in the workshop working on the 350 Vela at Hagen. So I know it's been dragging on for a while, but we will get this done. It's looking really good. I'm really happy with the progress so far. <laughs> So as you know, on the timing side, we've put a breather in. We've got one on the other side of the crankcase as well. Due to the crankcases being so skinny and that, they do build up a fair bit of pressure. So this will just help it out a bit. So I've got some hose here. But uh, I think I'm going to run the hose from the top of this breather underneath the carby and down the other side of the frame. Um, because if I run down this side of the frame, the way the hose is, it collapses. So it'll end up way too high right across the middle of the mud guard but if i lay it down the other side it'll actually come down the bottom of the mud guard so uh let's see how we go <laughs> right so i've just got the hose laid here at the minute uh, so maybe i could have laid this back a little bit more but uh, the natural curve of the hose sort of comes around and will end up halfway through the number plate. But if we run it down the other side, we should be able to get it along the bottom edge. So let's pull it down the other side and have a look how it, how it sits. Okay, so as you can see, we've gone down under the carby, around the down tube there, and I think we'll be able to get this to run nice, right down the bottom of the mudguard, and we'll run the other one, the other breather on top of that. So we're gonna put it from here, we'll run it back over here, and straight down the tubing on top. So I've got some clamps for that. So I've got the other breather here, we've got some hose. So what we're going to do is we put this one under the carby. I think we'll try and clamp all these down here and we'll run along the bottom of the mudguard. So we'll do our best to do that. Okay, so I've managed to run both breather tubes down one side. Got one coming out of the crankcase there, one coming out of the crankcase on the other side, up under the carby, into a P clamp, into two P clamps, along the bottom of the mud guard there, and just out the back. So uh, hopefully that'll help it out. But we'll see how we go. <laughs> Right, so the next job on this bike will be the gear stick. Uh, I've got the selector here. Uh, I've got a bit of tubing here, which I'll knurl a piece, and I'm actually gonna slice it and get some nice curves in it, and I'll get our mate Will to uh, run around with the MIG while he's doing the, uh, TIG while he's doing the exhaust, and just TIG it all up. So I'll get a nice shape to it instead of uh, collapsing the tube, trying to bend it and all that sort of stuff, because I don't have the right equipment for it. But uh, let's get it in the lathe and we'll knurl the end of it and we'll make a bung up for it as well to put in the end of the tubing. And it will go on the end of the selector right there. So let's get back into it. Okay, so I knurled a piece of tubing. I put some slices in it, give it a few bends, get it where I want it. I made a cap up for the end. Now this is straight off the gear selector. So they normally have a bit of a linkage off here, a bit of a pivot. So a couple of people have said to me, it's probably no good doing it this way. But Dad had one exactly the same on his road racer, which I rode a few times. And the shift was fantastic. It's, look, it's not going to be any worse than what the Albion gearbox shift is in the 500A. So it's up out of the way, plenty of room. So 
I think it should be a good thing. Right, the same as every other week. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell everyone. Let's bring Hagen's back. <laughs>